Hello, this is Mr. Miller and welcome to video 5.3 part 1. Uh, in this video, we're going to start talking about intercept form for parabolas. I just want to remind you that we talked about standard form for parabolas already. Standard form is kind of when the, the equation is all multiplied out and has the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And in this, we learned how to uh, tell if the parabola is going to open up or down by looking at the sine of a. So if a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. We uh, learned how to find the x-intercepts by using the quadratic formula. And we had this very useful formula for finding the vertex of the parabola. Now we're going to start learning about intercept form. Intercept form is basically uh, where the equation is factored. Uh, a still means the same thing as before. A tells us whether it opens up or down, so that hasn't changed. In this form, we're going to see that we can tell the intercepts from the graph just by looking at it. When it's in factored form, we don't need the quadratic form. So we're going to learn about how to spot the intercepts right away. And we're also going to learn, when it's in this form, how do we find the equation of the vertex. Okay, so here we go. My first example, I actually have the solution already worked out here, and I just kind of want to explain how I get it. The problem says complete the table for the following function and sketch its graph. And we're given this parabola right here. Notice it's in factored form, okay? And A is 1, which means it opens upward. All right, in order to come up with the points in the table, I just simply substitute values of x into the equation. So, for instance, when x equals 0, to find y, we just put it in for x. 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 5, you end up getting negative 1 times negative 5, which is positive 5. 0, 5, that's where that point came from. Uh, 1 comma 0, we simply put in 1 for x. 1 minus 1 times 1 minus 5. 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. It's that point right there. So we can complete the table just by putting in values of x, and when we plot the points, we get our parabola. Now, here's what I really want you to see. Uh, we want to see how we can tell the x-intercepts without even graphing it. Well, the first x-intercept is at 1, 0. If we think about it, when we put in x equals 1, this first factor would be 1 minus 1, which is 0, and 0 times anything is 0. So the value of x that makes this first factor 0 is our first x-intercept. The second one comes from the second factor. If we look at it, if we put in 5 into the equation, this will give us 5 minus 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, and whatever we get for this first one, 0 times anything is 0. So it turns out we can just find the values of x that make each of the factors equal to 0. That gives us the x-intercepts. All right, so that's the key thing we're learning in this video. The other really key thing is to realize that the vertex, at least its x value, is halfway in between the intercepts. So once we know the uh, intercepts, we can just find their average to get the x-coordinate of the vertex. So here, if I average the x-values of the intercepts, I get 1 plus 5 over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3, which is what we see here in the graph. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's right in between the intercepts. As always, to get the y-coordinate, you can always go back and put it in the equation. And this time you get negative 4. So from intercept form, we can quickly get the x-intercepts, if it has any, and the vertex. All right, so here's some examples. Um, it says, find the x-intercepts and vertices of the following parabolas. I'm going to ignore the graph for a second. The graph just helped me, uh, there to help me explain the answer. So to get the first x-intercept, we're going to look at what makes the first factor 0. Well, if I put in a negative 4 for x, negative 4 plus 4 was 0. That would make the whole thing 0. So our first x-intercept is 
negative 4, 0. The second factor uh, will give me an x-intercept of 6, comma, 0. When I put in 6 for x, 6 minus 6 is 0. That would be 10. 0 times 10 times negative 2 is 0. All right, now, those are the x-intercepts, and we see them here in the graph. Negative 4 and positive 6. The vertex is halfway in between them. So that's what you get when you take the average of two numbers. You get a number that's exactly in the middle of them. So negative 4 plus 6 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. And then to find the y-coordinate, go back to the equation. Negative 2 times 1 plus 5 times 1 minus 6, and I get 50. And that's the point we see right here in the decimals graph. X equals 1, Y equals 50. All right, we're going to do a couple examples, uh, see what happens here. Uh, on this one, uh, A is 1 half, so we know it opens upwards. The first intercept would be at negative 1, 0, because negative 1 makes the first factor 0. This is X minus 7. Uh, 7 would make that 0. So, sure enough, those are the two x-intercepts. To find the vertex, we're going to average them. So the vertex is right in the middle. That would be 6 over 2, which is 3. That makes sense. 3 is in between those two points. And the y-coordinate is uh, 1 half 3 plus 1 times 3 minus 7 which gives us negative 8. So the vertex is 3, negative 8, which is right there. All right, I want to consider a couple of kind of examples that look a little different. Um, this right here counts as a factor. We just have x times x minus 4. But this is one of the factors. And what would... Uh, the intercept that comes from that one is x equals 0. If I put in 0 for x, I'm going to have 0 times something, which is 0. So that gives me an x-intercept. 0 is 0. Turns out this parabola goes through the origin. And the other one is 4, 0. To find the vertex, uh, let's average the x-coordinates. And we get 2. And to find the y-coordinate, we just put in. So the vertex is 2, negative 4. Boom, right there. So the reason why I bring up this example is to not forget about that one. When x is by itself, 0 is one of the intercepts. The last kind of one I want to talk about here uh, is something like this. Uh, when we have a binomial squared, we can think of this as x minus 2 times x minus 2. That's what this exponent means. And we see that 2 is an intercept twice. It's actually called a double root. More, we'll talk more about that later. But the only x-intercept we have is 2 comma 0. We don't list it twice because it's the same point. And it turns out that if there's only one x-intercept, it means that the parabola touches the x-axis there and it turns out that that's the vertex also so two zero is the x-intercept it's also the vertex so i think once you see an example like that it's easy to understand but if you didn't see an example it'd be a little bit confusing okay time for our, our last example um there's kind of a couple typos here it should be y equals one fourth x plus 5 times x minus 3. So our first uh, intercept is at negative 5 comma 0. And our second intercept is at 3 comma 0. So negative 5, 0 is right there. Uh, 3, 0 is right there. Uh, that helps, but we really need the vertex also to draw a nice graph. So we're going to average those two. Negative 5 plus 3 over 2 is negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. 
and we get y equals 1 fourth negative 1 plus 5 negative 1 minus 3 which is 4 so the vertex is at negative 1 4 negative 1 actually I did that wrong negative 4 okay so negative 1 negative 4 now, it's a little bit hard to draw this electronically. And that's why I have a little bit better computer drawn one here. So when we're gonna sketch a graph from intercept form, find the intercepts, find the vertex, those three points can help you draw it. Okay, you should be ready to get started on lesson 5.3, part one, intercept form for parabolas. As always, give me an email if you have any troubles. Thank you. Take care.